Hey, what's going on, YouTubers? Big Philly, Poor Boys RC. Thanks again for tuning in today, guys. I want to take a moment and talk about LiPo batteries and how they, how Tamiya, with all their great re-release kits, um, as much as I love them, as much as we all love them, they still, uh, many of them still don't accept a modern LiPo battery. And a lot of us are running LiPos these days. Uh, I've gone basically exclusively LiPo. So it's a bit of a challenge finding a battery that's going to fit in a Tamiya chassis. If you look at a lot of the chassis, they've got rounded out openings uh, that are designed from the 80s to use a nickel metal hydride or NICAD battery pack with a kind of an oval shape to it. There's a basic standardized length, a standardized width, and cell shape, which is obviously round. So LiPos these days are much different. Coming in rectangular format, this is a hard case LiPo. They come without a hard case, often a little bit smaller. Sorry for the moving camera. My thing's doing some weird stuff today. Anyway, um, so there are solutions out there that are available. There are batteries that are available, and here's one right here I picked up recently on Banggood. So we'll get a little bit closer into these. We'll take some measurements, see what uh, see what they uh, see what the measurements are, and uh, see which chassis they fit in. Because although it looks almost exactly like this guy, there are still some small differences, which may make a big difference in the chassis that you're running. Let's check it out. So here we have two batteries that look virtually identical. This one here being the nickel metal hydride uh, six cell battery. And this one being a very comparable 4500 milliamp ADC LiPo battery, which is also configured in round format for Tamiya kits. At a quick glance, they look very similar in size. They have one of the key features for a Tamiya kit is to have your uh, battery leads exit through the center of, the, of one end. And they've done a good job of that here. As you see with the LiPo battery, obviously, you've got a balanced plug, which you don't have on a nickel metal hydride. But they've done a good job getting it balanced here. Not balanced, I'm sorry, but getting it centered as well as they possibly could. Great job, guys. So again, at a glance, they look virtually identical. However, let's look a tiny bit closer. Height-wise, we're looking pretty good. Those batteries are the same height, which is outstanding. As far as the round shape goes, they pretty much nailed it. That is fantastic. Looking back at the front here, we've got beautifully centered wires. They've done an awesome job of that. But there's one tiny, teeny, little, incremental, fatal flaw of this battery. And I will put the link in the battery to, in the description box below. One little flaw in this battery pack that is making it a little bit challenging to fit in certain kits. And that's the length of the battery pack. This LiPo is about four to five millimeters longer than the nickel metal hydride, which is going to prohibit fitment in certain chassis applications. Get out the old measuring tape here. Looks like we are five, just under five and a half inches on the LiPo. And we are about, oh, hang on a sec here. I really suck at measuring stuff. Yeah, just under 5.5. And here we're about five and a quarter, okay? So it doesn't seem like much, but on certain chassis, that's actually, that small variance will prohibit this battery from fitting in them. My most recent running video is of the Traxxas Sledgehammer. If you haven't watched it, make sure you do. It's a little self-promotion here, totally shameless. But check this out. Here's a sledgehammer. There's the old sledgerooski there. And let's see what we got going on here, guys. So there's, I was running a different battery during that video. Here's our nickel metal hydride pack. And it's even a little bit tight with these wires. I really have to kind of wedge it in, but she fits in there nice and snug. The added length of this battery will not allow it to drop in the chassis. Look at that, come on. So I'm not gonna try and jam that in there and possibly break a chassis that's gonna be virtually impossible to find online. <laughs> so. You know, so that was a bit of a bummer. Uh, this battery did not work for the Traxxas Sledgehammer. So I'm gonna take a quick minute and I'm, now that you guys have the, you know, the specs of the, of this battery pack, just because it didn't fit in a Sledgehammer doesn't mean it won't fit in other kits. So I'm gonna take a minute, got some pretty popular kits on the wall. 
I'm going to take them down, take down not all of them, but I'll take down a few of them, some of the more popular ones, and see if this guy fits so that if you're running that kit and you're looking to upgrade to a LiPo, you're going to know if this battery fits so you're not wasting your money. Check it out. So let's start off with my personal favorite Tamiya chassis out there, the CW01, in this case, the Tamiya Midnight Pumpkin. Let's take a closer look. The CW01 chassis comes in a variety of different setups, um, not setups, but different body configurations, the Lunchbox, Montero. Um, so you do your research there, but we're just gonna see if this fits the CW01 chassis. Bingo. Length does not seem to be an issue here. <laughs> That's what she said. There we go. We have got a nice fit. It, the, the battery bar here, as you see, this battery brace has to sit uh, just beneath the battery. I maybe I might be able to get it on top of these wires. Or sorry, beneath the wires. I may be able to get it on top, but I don't want to force anything. But that is held in nice and snug. That's not going anywhere. And the locking screw is able to drop in through the hole. Confirmed. This battery will fit the CW01 chassis. Good stuff. Good start. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So what about some of the more popular buggies that are out there? What about the Terra Scorcher, which, which shares a chassis family with the Fire Dragon, the Thunder Dragon. I think the... Uh, I want to say the Boomerang has a very similar layout, so... Let's see if the battery is going to fit these beauties right here. So one of the unique elements of this chassis is that it has a rounded battery compartment. So your traditional rectangular LiPo is not going to fit. Is this guy going to fit? Boom. Boom. Like a glove. Look at that, ample room. This chassis actually has, I think some of them, yeah, they've got adjustable bars here. I can move these in a little bit to, uh, to adopt a, a longer or shorter battery. Uh, so, fits like a glove in the old Terra Scorcher. All right. Next chassis we're gonna try out is the very popular ORV chassis, the off-road vehicle. This chassis, is used in many formats, including the Subaru Brat. Look behind me, we've got a uh, Monster Beetle and a Blackfoot up there. What else? Mud Blaster. What else, guys? I think there's a couple more. So, very popular chassis. Let's see if it fits the ORV. ORV's got this cool little nylon pin you just kind of pop out. Slide that guy open. Survey says... Ooh, she's pretty snug, but she fits. That fits, guys. It's not going anywhere. It's a little snug. You could back out these two screws just a little bit, maybe a millimeter if you back it out. It'll relieve the tension on this battery holding um, plastic brace here, and that would make it just perfect. So yes, indeed, it does fit the ORV chassis. All right, my excellent friends, that is three for three. We're on to a good start. I'm gonna do one more chassis. My favorite to me, a buggy of them all. Jeez Louise. The hot shot. And I love the hot shot. God, I love the hot shot. Okay, let's see if it fits a hot shot chassis. I think it's going to. I've actually run uh, the larger rectangular 2S LiPos in this in this guy. This thing's so full of sand. Definitely a runner. This is supposed to hinge open, but it's so packed full of sand it doesn't want to right now. Uh, so <laughs> that's that. But let's see if she drops in. And yeah, that drops right in beautifully. I can even thread the wires through there. I got a lot of wiggle room here. And boom, I can button that up like a glove. And it fits perfectly. 
So that's pretty good news. This battery, despite the fact it's a little bit longer, does fit in all of those chassis. Um, obviously not a Traxxas sledgehammer. <laughs> so don't try it if you're running a sledgehammer, which nobody is. So again, guys, I'm gonna leave a link to, the, uh, to this product down below in the description box. Um, if you're not running a LiPo, I'd highly recommend it. I mean, I know there's a lot of myths, not myths, but there's a lot of um, hesitancy towards running them because there is a danger, a risk involved because they're a little bit on the volatile side. But over time, technology's improved. Um, you know, and, and just be cautious when you're charging it. Maybe don't charge it in your house, do it outside um, in your garage and just monitor it. It's not, you know, a LiPo isn't like an old nickel metal hydride. Remember racing back in the 80s and 90s? You put these things on your charger between races and you pull them off and they're like smoking hot and you throw it in the car and you had like hot laps for the first five. Not the case here. You want a nice balanced charge on this thing. You know, I charge them at a 1C rating and just let it balance. And you've got tons of power. You don't have the crazy uh, highs and lows that you have with nickel metal hydride. You have nice consistent power with these batteries and uh, often much longer run times. In this case, we have a 4,500 milliamp battery that's virtually the same size as an 1,800 milliamp. Think of milliamps as the size of a gas tank in a car. This is a 20 liter gas tank. This is about a 45 liter gas tank. This one's gonna go a lot longer. So keep that in mind. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, be excellent to each other.